In the next section, I'm going to discuss how easy it is to configure the full license plate recognition module within Digifort. So, currently we're using the Digifort Enterprise Edition version 6.6.1.0. It's as simple as just double clicking on the LPR servers, creating your server by clicking the add button. Once you've done that, we log into our server and it requires a license. Now the LPR license runs with uh, two USB dongles. As we are all aware, the traditional uh, Digifort software is locked via a USB dongle. So you must purchase the USB dongle when purchasing your Digifort software. When we're going to use LPR within our servers, you could just imagine how many USB dongles we're going to require. One for LPR, which is a special engine, which is made by the manufacturer Carmen. Okay, so they make a, a dongle for us. We also have the second dongle, which is the Digifort LPR dongle, which will be the license for the Digifort. And the third dongle would be the Digifort uh, recording dongle, which allows you to record all the cameras, including your license plate cameras, on your Digifort software. So moving on here, we're going to have to activate a license. So as you can see here, I click on the licenses. Now already I have some demonstration licenses activated. But for those of you who have already uh, understand how Digifort work, we click the add button here. We have three options to choose from. One being send the registration data. So if you would like to test the Digifort software, you'd require to re fill out the form and send it into our Digifort office. And we can provide you a 30-day demonstration license for the license plate recognition. Do keep in mind, a license plate recognition is only possible to be tested if you have a Carmen dongle. Okay? And the Carmen dongle can be purchased from your local distributor. Fill in all your information and press the send button down here. It will send off the registration data to one of our Digifort servers that are located in the internet. Then click on online licenses and you'll be able to see the license populate straight away. If you've already acquired a 30-day license and you've already occupied it and it's ex expired, then you'd require another one. Please just email the support team, that's support at digifort.com, and we'll be able to provide you another 30-day license and override it for you. As you can see here, we've currently got installed licenses, one Digifort license. It was create date, which was yesterday, and expiration date is one month from now. We can also insert the license if you've been if that's been emailed to you. So here we have the license and the license method, which is a demo. Carmen, I've plugged in my USB dongle and restarted my computer or my server I should say. And now I can view both my Carmen engine and my Digifort server base demo. Let's go through to the configurations. Once clicking on the configurations, I can determine what port I'd like my Digifort server to communicate on. I can also configure what processing network it would be, whether I have one or multiple LPR servers. And we can identify which server it is on the same network. I can put an administrative password in to protect it so that no one else can log into my server as well. Now, let's go to the configuration of Digifort. License plate recognition. What we're going to have to do now to configure the Digifort license plate recognition is double click on our Digifort server. Now, for today, we're going to com connect with our own, with my own, which is my local host. Double click on it, go to license plate recognition. Now in here, status, we've currently got no configuration set, so we need to create one. So let's go down to configurations and click the add button. Just like in the old traditional way of anything that you do, regardless whether it's Digifort server or video content analytics, they all r roughly work around the same type of method. So, this is here will be known as LPR, an LPR camera, focusing on the front gate. This name is a very important configuration because once set, it cannot be changed unless you delete the configuration and start all over again. Let's go over to the description. So the description could be maybe front gate or front entrance. Front gate, okay. For example, Kent Street. So we know that they're coming in from Kent Street. This can be modified later on if we have to. Now we select what camera we want. Well, currently we've only set up one camera for today for the purpose of license plate recognition. We're going to use the recording profile. The recording profile is the, file, uh, the profile that we're going to process the image on. If we have a megapixel camera, we can maybe process an image at a very, very low resolution. And then, of course, our license plate recognition 
server. So as you can see, George, I've configured my own license plate server on my own PC. So I'm going to make sure that it's going to use. We're going to select the Carmen engine because I've got the Carmen license with me here today. And I'm going to check my operation schedule, make sure that it's currently running every day of the week from Monday to Sunday from uh, 24 hours. Perfect. We can also copy schedules across. Let's go now to the configuration. Now this is a very interesting part. Digifort has two methods of detection. One is a virtual sensor, which is more or less the most commonly used one, which is motion detection. A lot of the time, members like to uh, have like a motion detection or a camera that's just recording there. For example, when a vehicle drives past, without any physical sensors that are located on the floor, where there would be a contact or a broken line, that is classified as an alarm input or a physical sensor. Okay, a virtual sensor is based on the camera's motion. So this motion does also require a lot more processing and the dongle or the Kármán engine can only support a maximum of two channels at 25 frames per second. Physical sensor, the physical sensor is an alarm input. That could be maybe a contact or connected to an alarm device or a push button where a car has to come to a complete stop and physically push a button or maybe a barrier is broken and the car drives through so the contact opens because the contact is no longer available because the car wheels have driven drove past because the car wheels have drove past the barrier and it's opened or closed the contact once that happens then we can take a snapshot image of the license plate then our Carmen engine could determine what the number plate or the characters are and put that into our database. With our physical alarm input, you can select what kind of alarm input it is. So the physical alarm input can be a physical push button, it could be based on a camera's input or an output, it could be based on a particular VCA if you were to choose that. For today we're going to leave it as motion sensor. Once that's done, we move on to the image. Now the image is a very important section because we can actually activate an image resizing structure. So if the image is a very large image, it will only recognize the characters based on the image, cro image resizing that we've selected within the area here. Let's have a look at image cropping. We simply click the button, click crop or configure the crop. Now we can actually select a particular given area. So maybe we don't want to transmit or across both lanes. We only want to select one lane. And see here, maybe this has a time and a date. So if that comes through based on the imprint of your CCTV footage, that could also cause a problem because these are characters. So the Digifort engine might read it. So it's a very important idea to try and narrow down the section that you would like like the Digifort Carmen engine to detect. So here, I'm only going to select that area and anything outside that area is a waste. So make sure it doesn't recognize it. There we go. We can go through and activate some attributes. Now, attributes are very good because in some countries, maybe, you know, the license plates are fixed. Where, not like Australia, where we have, you know, we can ha we can purchase a number plate with one character or or six characters or seven characters or or can can combination of letters and numbers. In some countries, maybe you only want to determine the first three letters of the number plate are numbers only, and then the last two, sorry, the second two or the second section of the two, I only want to detect numbers only. And then the last last letter could be a number or a letter. So that would be classified as an X. Maybe in our, maybe in our country, our number plates only support numbers. So then we could turn around and only determine based on numbers. So we select a number. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now this tells us that Digifort is only going to look for number plates that consist of six characters. Alright, let's deactivate that for the time being. Further down we have license character count. So we can put a minimum character count and a maximum character count. So anything above the number that we've selected, it will just disregard. Go over to the right. So here we can add the users or the group's rights of who can actually access the license plate configuration. Once that's configured, believe it or not, you're actually done. That's how simple it is to configure a Digifort license plate recognition server. Let's have a look at some other options. We can delete the database records after 30 days. So it's a good idea to save that because 
Imagine 30 days later, we have a very, very big database of license plate numbers. Imagine if you don't delete it or maintain it. You need to do a little bit of housekeeping so that your file on your hard drive doesn't get too big. Let's have a look at the next section, lists. When we select lists, we can add a list of number plates, for example, that are stolen. So, for example, any number plates that we enter into the database as a stolen number plates, we can create a different kind of event to notify different people. Okay, the description will notify the police authorities. Our next section, we can add a license plate within our database. So, the moment it detects that number plate, it will automatically notify the police. So here we go. I've just added the number plate into our database. Now I can also import. So I can import it via a text document if I wish. Or I can configure some configurations. So here we are. These are the configurations that will take place once that number plate has been detected within our database. So send an email. We can send it to a particular group. We can send it to a default SMS. Okay, here are our configurations that we can configure and once the number plate is detected within the database it will trigger one of these following events. For those who use Digifort and the software more than likely you've seen this operation window before. So we can pop up the screen, we can select the camera to come straight across simply just drag and drop, we can check the scheduling of that alarm event we can sound off an alarm like so we can choose from 18 different uh, alarm devices. We can ch also change the duration. So here we go. Save that like so. Instant message to the operator. So this is stolen. So once they see that, they know that they have to very quickly respond. And then, further down, we can also request written confirmation from the operator themselves, or also known as the responder. We can configure different kind of configurables. Who will be receiving the uh, notification? But for today, we're going to leave it as blank. Let's press OK. So once we've finalized everything there, we go to the status and have a look at the configurations. So there we go. We can see that we've got one activated configuration, and the current activated configuration is currently working. And we have a look at how many frames are currently being processed. And we can also drill down on the configuration and have a look, for example, how many frames are receiving, and if it's processing all the frames, or if it's losing the frames. If you're losing frames, then more than likely your LPR configuration is not working. You may need to revisit the beginning of this video to run through all the steps again from the beginning. Let's have a look at it in the surveillance client. So let's have a look now how easy it is to view your license plate recognition. All the vehicles are driving by and as you can see as the vehicles drive by I'm receiving the number plates that are coming in through. It's very important to understand that the license plate recognition takes a lot of burden on your CPU or on your server. It's always a good idea to reduce the resolution and the amount of frames per coming in. Digifort recommends anywhere between 6 frames up to 25 frames. So there we go. Have a watch carefully right now.